just 10 days to explore around the Central American country of Nicaragua. I'll be traveling on my own, staying in the capital city of Managua, where I'll have access to seeing some of the country's best attractions. Somebody's gonna explain to you how they made chocolate here. <laughs> I didn't know I had that rhythm in me. The whole day was leading up to this moment. Finally got to see lava in person, and it was amazing. The volcano of Mombancho created the 365 islands of Canada. That one behind you, sir, it belongs to the first lady president here in Nicaragua. Now we are going to see some monkeys. Bye-bye. 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 That was the coolest thing on this whole ride. Wow, look at that water. We're going to be taking taxis, buses, and ferries just to get all the way to this island, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Now it's just a one hour ferry to the island of Omodepi. Let go, let go. We've made it to La Merced, which is the oldest church in Granada. So now we're hanging out in the main square, which is Plaza Colon. That's why we call this currency Cordoba, because of him. Entran al agua, parte que salen, caminan, entran al agua y así van a ir por dos kilómetros por dos horas. One of the coolest things I've done on this trip so far. You're so busy looking at the ground, not trying to fall over yourself that you miss what's behind you. Right we now. are literally in the crater of the volcano. Sandboarding down a volcano. This is what it all comes down to. Ah! Holy <laughs> They use this rock to build churches. Salud. That really escalated really quickly. So with the help of locals and the company Show Me Nicaragua, join me while I take you on this adventure showing you the highlights of Nicaragua. So this is my first international travel of 2021. And though Nicaragua has been on my travel list of places to see at some point, I just didn't think it was gonna be this soon. How this came to be is that I have a friend who runs a social media marketing company called Why Not You Media. And because he's seen my travel videos and knows that I can edit, occasionally I get to shoot content for them. So when he asked me would I be interested in flying to Nicaragua to shoot content for a cigar company, I was like, of course I would be. Any opportunity to travel and explore a new country without having to pay for it, I'm in. So the arrangement was going to be that I'd be flown out there to shoot content for one day, but because I also have a YouTube channel, I get to stay for 10 days with the guy showing me all the best places and therefore have a little project for myself. But after a couple of months of back and forth and days changing, eventually the deal fell through and I was so gutted because if this deal had gone through, this would have been the first time being flown out internationally for a pay gig. Not only that, but in anticipation, I had done so much research on what I could do while I was there. And then suddenly I had this feeling of overwhelming FOMO just come over me. And so going from a place that wasn't even on my radar at this point to now not being able to get it out of my head, I just decided, screw it, I'm gonna go anyway. And that's where we are right now. I have an early flight in the morning, and instead of just sitting here talking about it, how about I take you guys on the journey with me? Talk about empty. Whoa, that's what I like about these morning flights. 4 a.m. flight, no one's here. In one of the bins at airport security, somebody left their packet of um, Viagra. I've never tried them, but I know these aren't cheap. So buddy, I hope you have more because uh, you're gonna be missing out on a good time. My flight would be from New York City to El Salvador, where I'll have a short layover before reaching Managua, the capital of Nicaragua. All right, good morning, day number two. Um, and if I skip the days because yesterday was a pretty rough start to the trip. I met up with Lola yesterday who actually responded to my IG post about meeting up with a local and uh, it was great. We had lunch in the city and then decided to take a walk down the historical part of the city and that's when things kind of got disrupted. I was approached by a park officer who told me that I wasn't allowed to film there. No, uh, it's okay. So I went further down and I saw another park officer and I said, could I film here? And I said, well, you can't film in this section, but you can film further down of the old church. And that's what I attempted to do until we got approached by another officer who told us that we weren't allowed to film. And that's when Lola just went off. She vocalized her um, displeasure really well. What? She was like, 
How is anyone supposed to discover how beautiful my country is if you don't allow anyone to ever see it? Good valid point, but I was not trying to get a fine or even worse arrested on my first day here. I said, don't worry about it, it's not worth the conflict. I'll put the camera away and we just enjoy the rest of the day. And apparently this is like a new issue because uh, I was having this discussion with my taxi driver and he was saying that about three or four years ago, this wasn't even an occurrence. There wasn't even that much tourism. You know, now with COVID and Nicaragua being one of the few countries open to US travelers, there's been a new influx of people coming in and I guess their tolerance is just, uh, I guess they're just losing their tolerance with us. But it's all good, um, today's a new day and I got a double header for you because I'm going to be starting off with the Apoyo Lagoon and then ending off with Masaya Volcano. And I booked this tour through Viator, Viator, I'm not sure how to say this, but I've used them before and I like the way it's run, so I'm going to be using them for all of my tours for this trip. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a long eight to nine hour day. They're going to pick me up at 10 a.m. Then we're going to head out to the Apoyo Lagoon for a few hours and then ending off with the Masaya Volcano at night. And I'm really excited about that because I've never seen um, lava in my life and that's gonna be pretty much, that's gonna be the highlight of the day, I think. So let's get this day started. With guides Yester and Gustavo from Show Me Nicaragua, we drove 50 minutes to the city of Granada. Uh, it's gonna be amazing, you will see that. I know that you're very excited today. Yeah. After exploring the city center, our next stop was to indulge in a local treat. All right, the next stop is a chocolate factory. Somebody's gonna explain to you how they made chocolate here. Let's get it on. Come with me, come with me, boy, come with me. The each boat can have in size between uh, 70 and 100 beans. That depends on the size. This is a small, so a small one like this one. This one can have a lot, a lot, around 20 to uh, 40 beans inside. If we have a bigger one like this, between 70 and 100 beans. I really enjoyed hearing about the steps to making chocolate, but I was caught by surprise when I was told that I would also participate in the process. Then you will do it. I'm gonna do it? Yeah, yeah. Then you will do it. I need to set it up to work. And I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna hold the camera just to make I sure need, to, all right. you know, I need to see the club with me, all right? Yeah, okay. I need to okay. see the okay. club. Three, yeah. two, one, go. I don't have that kind of, I don't have that kind of rhythm. So you have to do it, sir. Uh, Come on, Tony, do it. Wait, I gotta hold on, I gotta stretch <laughs> out. I gotta stretch out first. Uh, all right, let's try this. Okay, three, two, one, go. I didn't know I had that rhythm in me. Something about the chocolate and the clapping. It was, I'm gonna oh. hire you. <laughs> the tour ended sampling various chocolate treats and with a celebratory toast. Repeat with me, guys. Arriba. Arriba. I don't hear you. Arriba. 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 Abajo. 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 Al centro. Al centro. Adentro. Adentro. Salud. 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 Oh, all right. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty exciting. All right, Danny, so in this case, thank you for coming. Eh? Thank you. So it was a pleasure for the tour. Yeah, thank you, guys. We continued on to learn more about the city of Granada. I'm gonna tell you a little story about Francisco Hernandez de Cordoba. Francisco Hernandez de Cordoba was found in this city. That's why we call this currency Cordoba because of him. Yeah. And now we have this beautiful statue. This city was founded in 1524. The Spanish conquer called that lake the big ocean. That's a beautiful lake because we're talking about Lake Granada. Lake Granada is 8,024 square kilometers. Actually, this is a fresh water and you will see different species. No other lake in the world has shark, only Granada Lake. I would not be swimming in there. <laughs> 
I came across this group of kids who were also exploring the city after coming into town for one of their games. The name of the thing is Bull Chontales. Chontales Bull. I could feel the pride and enthusiasm despite losing the day's game. They are in fifth place. Uh, the last game, they won. Even with the language barrier, they were eager to talk. They actually thought I was some big YouTuber. So we did a group photo op. We were now making our way to the natural reserve of the Apoyo Lagoon. Wow, look at that water. So we've made it to Apoyo Lagoon. And this is the beautiful result you get when 20,000 years ago, the cone of a volcano implodes. We get this beautiful saltwater lagoon. I like to call it a beautiful disaster. All right, let's jump in. Ah, floor is hot, floor is hot. Chill up here for a while, get to the sun. Oh yeah, this is it. We made our way to Masaya for a quick lunch with Nicaragua's first and largest national park within sight. Volcano Mombash. Witnessing Masaya, one of Nicaragua's most active volcanoes, was the most anticipated part of the day. Yeah, this rock was coming out of the volcano. This is Francisco Bobadilla. He's a priest. When he was here, ordered to indigenous to build a cross and put that cross on volcano's top in order to prevent the devil coming out of the mouth of hell. The history was happening in 1529. A lot of indigenous died when uh, they were going down the crater in order to take this rock because they used this rock to build churches. To build churches, Messiah, Renato City, Leon City. That's why the, you, you, you will see a lot of churches there because they use this kind of, you know, it's a big sacrifice just to build the church. Yes, yeah, sir. Made it just in time to see it during the light. Ooh, I can smell it. Oh, that's it. amazing, sir. <laughs> we rushed over here right after eating, and now we get to watch it before it gets too dark. I switched to my iPhone because my camera lens couldn't handle the darkness. Don't know if I caught any of that or how good it's gonna look, but the whole day was leading up to this moment. Finally got to see lava in person and it was amazing. Highlight of the day. Today I'm back in Granada and last time I was here Gustavo was talking about how the volcano of Mombancho uh, erupted in 1570 and created the 365 islands of Granada. So you have 365 little island so you will see as well there a lot of buildings and yeah that's amazing. So today what we're going to do is uh, take one of these boats and check them out. This is our captain. What's your name? Luis. 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 And I'm here with Julio Bob. and Jason Bob. today. Mama Norma. The boat is Mama the Norma. <laughs> Mama <laughs> Norma. Check this out first. My fingers trapped. Ah. So 
So here we have the, the Flor Poponjoche, we call it like that, right? But here they cut and they change it for other name. Uh, beautiful name, I would say. And okay, I will give you a clue. Banana? Yes. Banana flower. Banana flower. Uh. Let me show you why. Here, you took and then you shake it. Beautiful. So where's Bombacho exactly? That is Bombacho right behind us. It does 8,264 kilometers cuadrados. 8,624 square kilometers. Bella's house. Who are they? They are the, the owners of uh, Compañía Cervecera de Nicaragua. That's a rum company? What? Rum company? Yeah, yeah, that's a rum company. The rum floor of the canyon. The Fortress of Paulo, yes. 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 It was uh, built by the by the Spanish conquer. It was used to fight against the barriers to defend Granada. Oh, wow, this is a shark show, right? Yeah. Is that the house for the people that own the rum company? Yeah. yeah. Called the uh, named the monkey Michael. I think he's right here. Arriba, Michael. Arriba. Bye bye, Michael. Bye, Michael. That was amazing. Michael Jackson. <laughs> that was the coolest thing on this whole ride. That's the Familia Chamorro house that belongs to the new, the, to the new papers. No, the Diario. No, Diario. Right? And that one behind you, sir, it belongs to the president, the first lady president here in Nicaragua in the 80s. Violeta Valle de Chamorro. I love the colors. It's a nice house. Very nice house. Ooh, and then the view of Mombacho. That belongs to Emilio Baldodano, the third brother of the company Cafe Fresco. He's the owner of this amazing island and it has like 40 rooms under the land. So every time that he came to his island, he came in a helicopter.
Gracias. That was the best thing, man. That was awesome. Well, thank God. You Thank you, Ruiz. Okay. It was a great day. I didn't have any Cordova or small change. I just gave him the full 20. I mean, he deserved it. I mean, for what we did, we got to see presidents' houses, uh, monkeys. So now we're hanging out in the main square, which is Plaza Colon. And here you're gonna see people hanging out, food, games. Um, before COVID, there used to be a lot of live music and dancing, kind of slow now, but really nice park here. The last stop was the Church of La Merced. Built in 1539, it survived numerous fires from pirates such as Captain Morgan, with its clock tower offering views of Lake Nicaragua and Mombacho Volcano. Well, these stairs are tight. People were much smaller back then. We made it to La Merced, which is the oldest church in Granada. Also, this is where you come to get a 360 view of the entire city. I think that's all for today. Really great day. Good morning, everybody. Today, waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, to head to Omotepe Island. Now, I don't think you'd do this trip in a day, but I'm trying to make a day trip out of this because there's one thing in specific that I want to do, and that is Ojo de Agua, which translates to Eye of Water or the Water's Eye. And what it is, is a volcanic thermal hot spring. Anyway, I'm not going to be doing this through a tour. I'm going to be doing it the local way with a little help from Lola. Lola's back, guys. Let's hello, Lola. Hello. We're going to be taking taxis, buses, and ferries just to get all the way to this island, but I think it's going to be worth it. The bus from Managua to reach the city of Rivas would take us three hours. All right, we made it to Rivas. It would now be a taxi to San Jorge. Uh-huh. Alright, so we made it to San Jorge, which cost me a dollar because I'm not from Nicaragua. It's a foreign charge. Now it's just a one hour ferry to the island of Omotepi. Once we made it to the island, it would be a final taxi negotiation to reach our destination. We have made it to Ojo de Agua. Now, this is a volcanic pool. In the water, you're gonna have potassium, magnesium, calcium, sulfur, and sodium. And all these components together are supposed to be very therapeutic for your body, for fever, for allergies, and for sore muscles. Oh, this is just perfect. And the best part is, other than a few kids, there's nobody here. But a great start to the day. Well, you know how I just said it was a great start to the day? Well, I just crashed another drone and this one's done. I was trying to get a nice shot of the pool from above and I had no control over it. It was doing its own thing and crashed into the edge and fell into the water. That is the second drone I have crashed and lost. I think I'm done with drones. All the ideas that I had planned to do some drone shots and practice my drone work, that idea is out the window on day number three. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's how she says sorry, she's laughing. Do I look like a 
Instagram model. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> I think I swallowed a bug. <coughs> bug went in my mouth. Oh, I didn't know that, but there is another pool over there. Okay, put it back. Lola's gonna attempt the high swing. I know, you have to go here. Let go, let go. <laughs> let go, let go. You gotta let go, it's just water. <laughs> let go, it's just water. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that was worth losing the drone. We fueled up with a big lunch to survive the long journey back. This is super fun today, but it's sad when you drone. It is sad. Number two, two gone. Yeah, it sucks, but I, I would say other than that, it was a pretty good solid day today. Interesting drama for you this morning. So to explain the story, uh, two days ago I found this kid roaming around, peeking through people's windows. Caught him peeking through my window. I opened the door and asked him what he was what he was doing, and uh, he kind of snuck in to kind of get a look and said nothing in Spanish. You know, I'm just you know I'm not doing anything. So I said no, I need you to leave, and he didn't leave. He started looking through one of the maids' uh, cleaning basket, I guess looking for keys or something worth of value. Started taking video of him and he saw me from the window taking video of him and he came up to my camera actually <laughs> and gave it a high five. Pretty brave of him. So I took the video, sent it downstairs. I said, who is this kid? They said they never saw him before. So he wasn't staying here. Caught him today looking through my window because he knows what I have, my computer stuff, my camera stuff. And I opened the window really abruptly and said like, what are you doing here? and window shattered and he ran off. Like I've been talking to some of the guests that are next door and he actually opened the door and someone was inside and he was afraid and bounced. So yeah, I don't think he's a guest staying here and I don't think he was trying to be a friendly neighbor and just introduce himself or to even ask for like cereal or something. Yeah, I think he had bad intentions and I'm glad I uh, stopped this crime. And uh, I, we don't know where the kid is at, but I think there's cameras in this hallway, so hopefully they'll stop him from coming back. I think I scared him pretty bad. I don't think he's coming back again. He, he would have balls if he did, but I still gotta change rooms because you know, obviously I got an open window and I gotta. I don't feel comfortable here. But everything's all good. They didn't steal anything, and I possibly stopped him from stealing other people's stuff. And uh, they're switching the rooms right now, so everything's all good. Holy crap, it is early. All right, good morning, guys. It is 4.30 in the morning right now, and uh, this is probably the earliest I've gotten up on this trip so far. But we're gonna be heading a couple of hours out to uh, Sumoto Canyon, and also Lola will be joining us today and a group of random people, so let's we'll see how it goes. So we stopped off in this little town, and I have no idea where we are. This tour includes breakfast, all for 25 bucks which is great. Hacia el cañón, son 15 kilómetros de aquí hasta el cañón. Entonces son unos 15 minutos o menos. Son 2 kilómetros en el agua, pero hay partes en que caminan, entran al agua, partes que salen, caminan, entran al agua y así van a ir por 2 kilómetros por 2 horas. We just started the trek that's going to take about 2 hours to all of Samonte. And it is boiling hot out here. The weather's perfect, but it's boiling hot. So I'm opting to keep the uh, sun hoodie on because the other day in Omotepi, I got crispy fried bacon and I'm not trying to get roasted any more than I am. Look at the size of this dude. 
Don't get too close. It is. Ahí se forma el río Coco, el río más largo de todo Centroamérica. Tiene el río Coco 680 kilómetros de largo, lo que es el río Coco. Oh, we just walked into a field of cows. ¿Cómo llegaron estas vacas aquí? Ellas bajan por aquí por donde venimos. Test the water. See how cold it is. Oh, it's just perfect. So we begin the Samoto Canyon Trail. This is looking fantastic. Now. I'm glad I did this. And it's beautiful. One of the coolest things I've done on this trip so far. One, two, three, go! Job jumping, even though I didn't catch it because he didn't wait for me to film it. at the end was a nice touch highlight of the day what what is it it's masa con queso horneada very good battery recorded that I'm so low on battery but this day just gets better and better look at that that was about as local as local can get and it was delicious um we're hearing thunderstorms coming so we better head back we won't be back to managua until about maybe 10. So, uh, it's gonna be like a three hour drive okay it is 6 a.m and this is it this is the last day of the trip and in our travel style 
we're going to be ending it epically by checking out one of Nicaragua's biggest highlights, and that's going to be sandboarding down a volcano. <laughs> I mean, I am so stoked for this. I should be tired at 6 a.m., but I am so wide and ready for this. And not only have I gotten to check off something of my bucket list by seeing an active volcano with lava up close and personal, but now I get to sandboard down a friggin' volcano. This is going to be such an epic day. I mean, what more can I say? But let's get this let's get this day started. All right. Before we get to Cerro Negro, first thing is breakfast. We're going to see a traditional breakfast being made and then eat it. Buenas. ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué hicieron las tortillas? Like, una persona, ¿cuántas tortillas hace? One person, how many tortillas make? ¿Cuánto hace? Ajá, por lo menos. Incontable. Incontable. Would you like to see that, how they make the tortillas? Of course. Para que yo... music. So this is Juana Davila and this is Santos Heriberto Silvas. They were the first one who invented the casilla. Both decided to establish themselves in Lapa Centro. So this is the place called Lapa Centro. It's a municipality from the city of Leon, which is the city where we are heading to uh, later. So they came up with this crazy idea of boiling cheese because that's what they do. They boil the cheese and they came up with the casilla. Originally, they were the only ones who had the recipe to make a seal. But of course, as good Nicaraguans, because we are really good at copying stuff, the workers copied the formula and they took it to other places. And we're gonna order the quesillo here. There is another city next to this one, which is called Nagarote, and they fight. So they say Nagarote was the original city from the Quesillo, and La Paz Centro say they are the original city of the Quesillo. So every year they make a contest. Who has the best Quesillo? La Paz Centro or Nagarote, which is the next city? This is your board. This is the one you're gonna use to slide down the volcanoes. There's no hospitals in two hours near the volcano, right? I'm pretty durable. Terrific. <laughs> pretty durable. Have some fun. Cerro Negro, meaning Black Hill, is the youngest volcano in Central America. It's also one of the most active volcanoes in Nicaragua, erupting 23 times since its birth in 1850 and last in 1999. Trek begins. It's going to be about 45 minutes up to the top, and the plan is to do this more than once, so we'll see how it goes. It is blistering hot out here. This is only the beginning, my friend. Yeah. The beginning of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to you. That side, that's Honduras already. That mountain right there? Yeah. You're so busy looking at the ground, not trying to fall over yourself that you miss what's behind you and in front of you. I mean, look at this view. Amazing. Surprise, surprise, the young kid made it to the top first. <laughs> What's up, guys? Banana break? We make banana break and chocolate. We're going down the crater. This is an active volcano. So it actually uh, may tremble. And if you hear some explosion, don't get scared. That's pretty normal. We are not dying. I hope so. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready to go, right We now. are literally in the crater of the volcano, the active volcano. So basically, we are working above lava right now. Like underneath, under these rocks, there's lava, like running lava. You see something like smoke coming out of here? So basically, this is the hottest area on the volcano. I feel so it. So people bring poor stuff here, just for the heck of it, to have fun. No, sir! Is 
gonna be sliding down here. You're gonna begin here on the top, 728 uh, meters. So, so you're gonna start sliding all the way there until you reach the bottom, right? So once you see you are reaching the bottom, make sure that you break using your ankles. If you use your elbows or your hands, you're gonna fall and you don't want that to happen, right? So that would be it. Always keep your hands inside the board and your ankles outside for you to break. If you put everything inside, you're gonna reach speed and very high speed. Okay. All right, unless you wanna do that, then do it, all right? So remember, to reduce speed, ankles. To speed up, the whole body inside the board. Okay. All right, got it? Yeah. All right, terrific, so let's make it happen. what it all comes down to see what I'm made of I'm about to go down at uh, warping speeds of how fast you can reach 80 or 90 kilometers per hour okay wow all right let's do it <laughs> that's really windy oh yeah remember yeah sit at the back and go for it we're ready action <laughs> oh my god, that was crazy fast. <clears throat> I got <laughs> I have volcanic rock in my mouth. That was an amazing experience. Another epic and to a fantastic trip. My mouth is so dry. Boy, that really escalated really quickly. I mean that really got out of hand fast. Perfect timing. That is at the bottom. Yesterday was absolutely perfect. I mean, it couldn't have ended any better. And the guides, Mike, Milton, and Victor, were a great company. And we had the entire volcano to ourselves. And the slide down probably didn't last more than a minute and a half, maybe two at max, but it was such a thrill and totally worth it. And I thought that was the ending of the day, but then Mike afterwards took me to his English academy that he started right above his house. And I got to meet the students, and then I <laughs> unexpectedly became a guest speaker. You can set your camera anywhere you want to. Uh, this is a surprise. I'm apparently like a, the guest speaker here. And yeah, so we did a Q&A with the students who work on their English social skills and comprehension. And they mostly asked me questions about YouTube and traveling stuff, so yeah, it was great. And now I get to go back home to New York City with that being my last day, my last memory, and my last impression of Nicaraguan people. Yeah, this was a good trip. Nicaragua's beauty is simple in comparison to other countries, but what it didn't lack was generosity and kindness. I met really great people offering their time and effort into making sure that I had the best experience. Sure, I had a few safety instances like the creepy late night taxi ride from Umatepe back to Manawa after missing the bus, but even then, we met a random gentleman willing to give us a ride to get us to the station on time. It's a perfect example of why when I've had negative experiences in the past, I've often decided not to show such unfortunate circumstances in my videos. It's not to give an inaccurate representation of my travels, it's that these situations are never my general consensus and just a small portion of my overall experience of the country and people. Traveling isn't perfect, but what I've seen through my years of doing this is that the majority of people are good, and Nicaragua is no different. 
I had a wonderful time, but my only regret was not being able to visit the Corn Islands. But due to their COVID regulations and my travel dates, I had to stay in Managua for my results to be within three days of my return flight. But that just means that there's more left to see of Nicaragua, and someday I'd like to make it back and explore more. But that is all for now, and I look forward to sharing my next adventure with you. So like, comment, share, and subscribe, and until the next one. But you know, it worked! <laughs>